Welcome back. Fox 5 is on the Hill live this Sunday morning. This past week, hundreds of people rallied here in Washington for the National Assault Weapons Ban. Now, the group known as March 4th was formed just 36 hours after the July 4th shooting outside of a Chicago suburb. They say the bipartisan gun bill that just passed in Congress does not go far enough. My cousin Xavier in the Uvalde shooting. I'm here to fight for justice. There were so many people who lost their lives in, in all the shootings, and that's not okay. And there needs to be change. If we have one more loss, it's one loss too many. Um, so I'm pretty firmly of the belief that we can't let this happen again, and no measure, you know, in our opinion, goes too far. I'm an American citizen with three young kids that have not been impacted by a mass shooting, and it needs to stay that way. Some of the sounds from the rally this past week. People marched from Highland Park, Illinois, also from Evaldi, Texas, uh, included marchers. One of the organizers joins us live this morning, uh, Maureen Westfall. She is an organizer from the Chicago area near where the shooting took place. She lives in Washington, D.C. She helped mobilize the group. Maureen, thanks for being with us. Uh, let me take the cynical question for you, Maureen. We go through a cycle in this country of mass shooting, condolences, talk of action, no action, and then everybody forgets about it until we have another mass shooting. Why is this moment different in your view? That's a really good question, Tom. Thank you for having me. Um, let me share a quick overview of who we are and why we are here. Um, in May in Uvalde, Texas, 19 children and two teachers were murdered in their classroom. In Highland Park, seven people were murdered at a 4th of July parade. That's why the victims, the communities, and supporters came together in D.C. this week with one shared goal. We demand that Congress ban assault weapons now. There were nearly 500 people that we organized in just under a week to march and support these communities who are committed to making Highland Park the last community devastated by gun violence. I think that we opened so many doors here. We met with members of Congress. We met with second gentleman Doug Emhoff and White House staff, and we shared these brutally hard stories. Um, we are seeing progress. Just on Friday, there was a development out of the House Judiciary Committee. They will be marking up the assault weapons ban for the first time in two decades. Mm -hmm. So I'm really starting to believe we were hurt and that the tide is turning here. And we're we going to do more of these thoughts and prayers. We also know later today that the uh, victims' families in Ovalde, Texas, are going to be able to view the uh, videotape of, of uh, that uh, tragedy in Uvalde. When you look at the cycle that we just talked about, where are we in that circle at this point right now? Because it seems that because the members of Congress on both sides were able to reach this agreement, that there is, is a bit of a feeling of accomplishment and that their work may be done right now. The White House called this a celebration on Monday when they had an event to highlight the bipartisan nature of that agreement. Did you, did you feel like a celebration was premature? Let me just put our visit in perspective here. Uvalde and Highland Park are only the two most recent mass shootings to dominate headlines. We're only midway through 2022, and there have been more than 300 mass shootings in the United States. That is staggering. So our belief is that enough is enough, and we can never do too much to protect our children and our communities. The urgency today could not be more real, and I, Congress appears to get this. You know, on Wednesday, House Judiciary is going to be marking up the assault weapons ban, the first time in 20 years that they have taken this step. So this is an all-hands-on-deck moment, and we expect a majority of members of the committee to vote in support, and then the full House will vote on it before adjourning for August. So this moment, we feel, is a long time overdue, and it's time for our legislators to decide whether they want to end mass shootings or not. Political reality on the ground right now on the Hill, though, is that, as you know, both houses are controlled by Democrats. We are heading towards a November midterm election, uh, which could flip control of both the House and the Senate and turn the entire Congress over to the Republicans. Do you have the inroads into the Republican caucus right now that you would need to advance something like this? Well, last week we met with members of both chambers. We understand the challenges ahead, but for the immediate future, we are focused on the House. They are marking up H.R. 1808 this week. The Senate 
we'll feel the full focus of our group once we cross these next two hurdles. Ultimately, we want to send a message to Congress. It's very clear that the majority of Americans want a federal ban on assault weapons now. So we expect our lawmakers to do that. Some of the analysts have looked at what your group has been calling on, say that the other part of it, a national universal background check may be actually obtainable. Where are we with that? Well, our focus is on um, an assault weapons ban. That is why we came to D.C. That is what we are demanding. That is what we expect out of Congress. All right. Uh, Maureen Westfall from the uh, group March 4th. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your Sunday morning to uh, speak with us today. Thank you, Tom.